Yeah, they have to make really, really, really. They want the heated chair for you. Take my chair. <laughs> Okay, so so thanks for coming uh, so early in the morning. Uh, this uh, is going to be Raju Balakrishnan's uh, PhD defense. Um, his uh, dissertation is uh, titled uh, "Trust and uh, Profit Sensitive Ranking for Web Databases and Online Advertisements." Um, so before we start, I'd like to say a couple of words about Raju, um, and then he gets to do his presentation. Uh, Raju has been here uh, since 2007 um, in our program. Uh, he's done work on deep web and computational advertisements. Um, his committee members are uh, uh, Juan Lu and myself in 3D and, uh, <laughs> and uh, Yi Chen and Anhai Don, uh, Wisconsin, uh, somewhere in the deep web, <laughs> taking, part, taking part astrally. Uh, thanks for all that time. Um, so Raju's work, uh, you know, has been I think been quite well received in my uh, from what I can tell. Uh, he got a Yahoo uh, Key Scientific Challenges Award in 2009. He got like a World Wide Web uh, Conference uh, Best Poster Award in 2010. Um, I believe he got some money for that. I didn't get any of it. Um, <laughs> and he also I but however I managed to get a Google Research Award using his work. For that, he doesn't get any of that money. I get it here. Uh, um, and so, on an overall, I think he also got a bunch of uh, good publications, including uh, most recently uh, the source rank work has just been accepted uh, to Transactions on Web, uh, ACM Transactions on Web. So, I think um, uh, the work has been well received. Um, and of course, the committee can weigh in to see whether it's um, yeah, interesting enough. Um, the other thing I, I wanted to say is uh, personally, uh, a couple of things about Raju. Um, the way I'll miss him is when I come on Saturdays, my lab would be fully, fully empty because <laughs> nobody ever shows up other than him on weekends, and he's always a hardworking guy. So, you know, I would uh, certainly miss him, I guess, unless. Uh, Ali's wife uh, still doesn't get visa. <laughs> really, really, the entire uh, fifth floor would be empty you know, when I come on Saturday. So, um, the other thing I want to mention about Raju, uh, that sort of I remember for, uh, for a long time, is he's probably the most tenacious student I had in defending his ideas. Um, I was almost never, it was never possible for me to convince him that what he was saying is wrong. I thought once I succeeded, but in three minutes he changed his mind and said, no, I'm still right. <laughs> so, so uh, I mean, I say this uh, also, I think, uh, for the help of the other PhD students here, because after all, ideas are very fragile, and uh, it's very easy for anybody, including your friends and your advisors, to kill them. You know, all it takes is, oh, it doesn't make sense. And in fact, I'm sure I tried killing the source rank idea multiple times. Um, and uh, so it's good to be able to, you know, be perseverant and tenacious. And I think that's something that I'll remember quite a lot uh, about Raju's stay here. So that's all I wanted to mention about Raju. Uh, he's going to do his uh, defense. Uh, good morning, all. Uh, thank you, Rao, for the wonderful introduction. Uh, also, I would like to thank my uh, other members in my committee, uh, Yichen and Hai Don and uh, Dr. Huan Liu. Uh, today, I would like to share my PhD research on trust and profit sensitive ranking for web databases and online advertisements and some uh, related excitement in, in, uh, in this area. So before going into the details, uh, I would like to uh, give you a high level overview of what is uh, in, the, in the presentation. So uh, I have two parts. First part deals with the ranking of the deep web, and the second part deals with the ranking of the ads. Both of them are in fact closely connected. I would elucidate the connections after a few slides. So consider the first part, uh, the first part that is ranking the deep web data. Uh, I will explain what is deep web uh, in this slide. So, the, in the uh, part of the web containing only the HTML pages is only a fraction of the entire data in the uh, in the World Wide Web. The remaining data is uh, hidden inside millions of the relational databases. Uh, 
uh, like Amazon and YouTube. These, uh, the data is stored in the relational tables, and they are connected. Sorry, and they are connected to the uh, connected to the web and accessible through the web forms. So, uh, according to most of, the, according to many estimates, the data contained in the deep web is many times that of the data in the surface web. So, the problem here is that this part of the web, that is the deep web, is beyond the reach of um, current surface of search engines like Google or Bing. Uh, so, well, first part, part of my thesis entirely deal with making this data accessible and searchable to the uh, common people or um, as accessible as the surface web. So, what is the problem here? A couple of years back, I was trying to buy a car or a used car. So, first I wanted to get uh, do a little bit of research on the cars and see a little bit of review. So, I just went to Google and typed in the query like, okay, I want to get about no, about Honda Civic 2008. And within seconds, I got the results back and a top few results I clicked and I went through the reviews. Yes, everything was so fast and nice. But when I got to the second step of buying the car, uh, it's not that easy. The information is spread across multiple uh, databases. There are many dealer databases and there are Yahoo Autos, there are Amazon Autos and so on. So I had to go to each and every database, enter the queries, get the results back, compare the results and buy it, uh, and make up my decision. That is a tedious process. It takes maybe hours or maybe even days to do this. It's not as easy as uh, if you enter the same query in the Google, you will not get any good results for the used cars to send. So, or in any other database, that is a problem. So, what I, so what on, so one of the, the most promising approach to solve this problem, that is to make the deep web searchable, is uh, is the integration approach. In an integration approach, what we do is the user will enter the queries to a particular database, and the uh, particular mediator, sorry, particular mediator and mediator will select a subset of sources to send these queries um, then, uh, then mediator will send these queries to the data sources get the results back, combine it, rank it and give it back to the user this is called integration approach so my thesis especially deal with ranking problems here there are two ranking problems one is ranking the sources that like whenever you get the queries which are the best sources to send this uh, query that that is what we call the source ranking problem or selecting the sources problem. And the second rank, main ranking problem here is ranking the results. Once you get back the results from these databases, how do we order it and give it back to the users? So, so that is the second ranking problem. So first part of my thesis deal with these two ranking problems. Sorry. So the first question that anybody may ask is, we already have so many ranking algorithms for the web pages. Why can't we just reuse one of them? Like we have so many Zigaya web pages, or we have so many basically diseases or the before. Why do we need a new ranking? So the problem with these two existing ranking mechanisms is that they don't consider the importance and the trustworthiness of the answers when they do the ranking. So, by what I mean by importance is, I will uh, give an example on this. Suppose you give a query like God for the trilogy. So, it's a classic, a classic well known movie. Uh, so, a anyone would expect a few results uh, from God for the 1, 2, and 3 to be shown in the top few results. Um, these are sample results of the same query from the Google page or Google product search. So Google product search is a limited approach by Google to solve this problem. So they collect the data from, the, from these deep web sources in a single database, send the queries to them and uh, try to return it. But it, it is very uh, limited, like it, it covers only a small fraction of it and it has its own problems and still it is in a beta stage. So these are the results from the Google uh, product search. So if you look at the top results, none of these results really refers to the Godfather movie or Godfather book, uh, which is again a famous book by, by Mario Puzo. So this is what I call by the, uh, you consider the importance. So the second part is regarding the trustworthiness. By trustworthiness, what I mean is, when you give these queries like say Godfather, you will get see the top results like, uh, uh, 
Godfather movie with say 0.1 dollar. So when you try to go to that databases and check out the movies, you will figure out that okay, this is not really the hack movie. It may be it may be either out of stock or if it, you are looking for a book, maybe solution manual for that book and so on and so forth. So these kinds of bait and switch is very prevalent over the product search and the deep web databases. So th this is what we call the trust worthiness problem. In fact, if, when I was trying to buy a book by Star Six by Shivaris and Techroot a few years back, I did I was even unfortunate. I really bought the solution manual of that book, thinking that it is textbook, and I realized that only after opening the box. So, um, so I guess many, some of us might have similar experience. Like the cover would be the same, price would be awesome, but when you really buy it, you get a different product. That's a trustworthiness problem. Uh, so before going into the details of the problems and the solution, I guess um, now we have an overall idea of what are the problems. I would just give a quick glimpse of our system implementation. So we implemented um, my ranking, uh, our ranking algorithms in a system called Factor, which is in fact online in this uh, particular uh, URL. So we have an offline component which do the source analysis and ranking, and we have an online component which is actually doing the results ranking, and we search in the actual databases here. So this is sampled results from the same Godfather for the trilogy in the Factor system. What you see is actually uh, top results in fact refer to the Godfather. Uh, so I have some of these problems are really in fact being solved here. So this is a comment from one of our review based interpreter. He says like I got in fact got better results than the Google uh, products. So probably I can show you uh, show you one or two quick queries in this particular uh, system. It might be uh, uh, sorry. So you go here and uh, research right here. Sorry? I think you got a question. Oh, sorry. You are not really asked. Uh, the screen that I'm just like, 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 I, 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 we can't hear you properly. Oh. Can you hear the screen now? I mean, it's yes. actually breaking. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, you can. I think you, you cannot hear? see the demo. When you change the, when you change the, the, the oh, okay. thing. so okay. I think you should skip the demo and just go with the slides. Okay. Tomorrow. Okay. That's what she was trying to say. Fine. Okay. I'll just skip the demo. Uh, then I go with the slides. Okay. Sure. I think because when you change the screen, that's the issue. This is the only screen that is shown. To me. Yeah, probably uh, slides are shared. Sure. Yeah, everybody has an iPad or something anyway. So instead of listening to him, you can check. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so again, this is um, so this is the system implementation. So I've got the uh, more formal parts now. So. Uh, for this presentation, I might be going a little faster over the play, over the slides, which is already covered prior uh, uh, by the proposal, and give more emphasis or time on the uh, on the uh, parts than after the proposal. Is that okay? Okay. So the source selection problem. Uh, first, I will describe the source ranking, and then I will come to uh, result ranking and other related extension. So the, what is the source selection problem? The problem is given a user query, select a subset of sources to provide important and trustworthy answers. So how do surface web do that? One or, so clearly one or other link analysis method is used by every search engine. Can be may not be page rank, but either tilt or either uh, other tests and hubs. It it depends on the links. The problem here is that we do not have the hyperlinks between the deep web records. So we need some other method. Uh, so the approaches like the certifications will not really scalable or it's not really feasible in the large open collections like the deep web. The problem is so our idea, so we need to an alternate for the link analysis. A couple of observations which is 
helpful in this, uh, which is related to this, is that many of the sources return the answers to the same query. If you send the Godfather query, you get answers from a lot of sources uh, like Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and so on. So this might, this we may be able to leverage. The second thing is that we can compare the results. The comparison between the results is in fact easier because the data is neatly structured as the relational tuples. So the idea is to, our basic idea is to compute the importance and trustworthiness of the answers based on the agreement of the answers returned by the sources. I will define the agreement in a moment, in a few slides, but as of now just think of as two sources are agreeing if they are returning similar answers to the same query. So why agreement implies trust and, uh, trust and importance? So if you, uh, suppose you give the Godfather query, the, uh, the important results like the classic Godfather is likely to be written by a larger number of sources. There is another movie like The Little Godfather, which is a Hindi movie and which has a clear um, uh, match with the query. But with fewer sources, sources will be returning Little Godfather, but the classic Godfather will be written by a larger number of sources. So the, if you consider the agreement, it is likely to bring up important results, top in the ranking. And the second part is uh, uh, regarding the trust. The thing is that the untrustworthy attributes of the results of the false results is likely to be disagreed by the other sources having tr having trustworthy attributes. For example, the uh, uh, point one dollar price would not be agreed by, by the large number of sources, and those results might go down. And going a little bit more formally. Uh, in terms of the theoretical perspective, here we have the universal set of tuples, and we have true set of tuples, yellow, and a blue green set of tuples. Oh, sorry, blue is the relevant set of tuples, and what we need is the green part, that is the relevant and true set of tuples. So the probability of agreement agreeing to false tuples is one hour cardinality of the universal set, that is the entire set of movies. For to give an example. So the probability of agreement of two independent uh, pick relevant tuples, uh, if it is true tuples or relevant tuples, is one over RT. That is this set. So size of the cardinality of the universal set is very very larger than that of the RT. So uh, as a consequence, agreement of two true tuples, probability of agreement of two true tuples is very very higher than probability of agreement of two false tuples. To put the numbers in perspective. Uh, suppose you are again going back to the Godfather movie. Suppose that we have three results like Godfather trilogy 1, 2, and 3 are our relevant results. So two independently picked Godfather uh, trilogy movies are likely uh, likely to agree with 1 over 3 probability. But on the other hand, two false tuples, suppose we have 100k total movies, the probability of agreement of two false tuples is 1 over 100k. To be precise, 1 over 100k minus 1, minus 3, but it's almost is equal to 1 over 100k. So this is the formal uh, explanation of why it works. Um, to, uh, on, uh, so I will go uh, to the uh, details of how it really uh, is being, uh, we use the agreement in a, um, you know, based on a source graph. So what we do is we build our source graph, based, uh, a graph uh, model of the sources based on the agreement. What we do is we do large number of we send large number of sample queries to the sources, get the results back from them, compute the agreement, and based on this agreement we build our source graph. So here the link from S1 to S2 means 0.14 fraction of the tuples in S2 has been agreed by the S1. Uh, so we here we use a small a smoothing probability and. Uh, we combine, uh, since it is a fraction, this is a director link rather than an undirected link. So uh, we compute like that and we hear the source graph or the source graph, the vertices are the sources and the uh, links are the agreement between them and this is computed based on the sampling query and this entire computation is offline, not at the query time to uh, keep it in mind. Uh, so uh, uh, mean agreement uh, for the um, is, uh, entire set of sampling queries is used as the final agreement between the sources. So once we have the source rank, we compute the rank or gross or score of a source based on a Markov uh, random walk. We model the source rank as a Markov chain 
and uh, static visibility probability of a uh, director marked by random walk on a particular source is used as the score or the source rank of a particular uh, source. Uh, it's offline computation as I mentioned early. Now I've got, got a little bit detail uh, of how do I, uh, what are the challenges in computing the agreement between the results. So, in fact, uh, we have, uh, and these are two example tuples. If you look at the tup uh, tuples, the uh, titles are, these are in fact semantically same movies, but the titles are represented in different way. The prices are different, in, uh, represented in a different way. Casting is represented in a different way. So even though they are semantically same, they are synthetically different. So it's a, a plain comparison between them is not going to bring up the semantic similarity between the entities. Raju? Sorry, yes, sure. Um, you can't really get all of the tuples back from the sources. The, right? That is true, I cannot. And, and they, so they return sort of an implicit ranking. Yeah, it, it, it's based on the um, sampling, implicit, I, you mean? Well, what if they only were willing to give you 10 tuples? Yes. Would that impact how you define the agreement? Uh, in fact, uh, we are assuming only they are aware. Uh, so his question is like, um, what if this, the sources would return only top k tuples instead of the entire set? So how do you deal with that? So that is one of the challenges when you deal with the uh, uh, deep uh, uh, ranking, you cannot assume the availability of the entire data or, this, or more technically we said the sources are non-cooperative, it's highly non-cooperative. So for this particular method we are kind of considering only the availability of top care results. Uh, the value of k is 5 in our experiments but that so is something we have to live with, there is no way to uh, overcome that. And the challenge is to make it still working. But the good thing is that you get, when you are sampling, you get the top cat tuples. Uh, the top cat tuples is what you get even when you are searching. So it's not really significant for you what is really in fact inside the source. What's significant for you is what sources are returning. That is your metric for the source quality. I'm just wondering about the definition of agreement. These fractions are in terms of the top five it's, results. It, that, that is with respect return. only to the sampling. Whether the sampling is representative or not, that is, uh, irrespective of the, in spite of the ranking, that is a question which I would say is hard to do because you don't have the samples really. So it depends on the rank, ranking algorithms of the different sources, it may be or may not be representative. I'm wondering if you consider doing something like an exponentially weighted sum, just for uh, the mathematical definition of agreement, so that, so that you have an excuse for ignoring something beyond a certain cutoff. Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, I think uh, theoretically you may be able to do that, but considering the fact that what you, even when you are searching, you are getting only the top k uh, uh, tuples. So whether it is really going to improve, means whether you really have to consider the entire data or not, that's not very clear. My hunch is that it's not going to improve the performance in a uh, realistic uh, scenario. We consider some kind of weighted weighted agreement computation like giving top more more weights to the tuples in the top k. I really run the experiments on that but uh, uh, it, is, it really did not improve the performance over the over the non-weighted agreements actually. So does that kind yep. of answer your question? Thank you. Uh, anyone else has a question? Okay, so these are the challenges. This is the non challenge in the non challenge in the databases. It's called a recording case problem. Um, so this is a little more detail into the how do we compute the agreement. So here we have two, two sample tuples. We do a three level compute three level computation of the agreement. In the first level we compute uh, agreement between the uh, between the attribute values, that is title against title, and the second uh, uh, level we compute the agreement between the uh, between two tuples, and the three, uh, third level we go one level higher and go to, uh, compute the agreement between two answer sets. Uh, so uh, what we, we use the soft TFIDF with the Jara Winkler uh, to compute the agreement between the attribute values. We start, we do go for a greedy approach. We start with the first attribute value of the first tuple, 
compare, match it with the most similar attribute value of the second tuple. Then we go for the start with the second attribute value of the first tuple, match it with the most similar unmatched attribute value of the second tuple, and so on. This is a bipartite matching problem. So is the, the uh, OV squared, OV cubed is the optimal time complexity. This algorithm is OV squared. We save a little time here. So. Compare and result set is like we have a, a, for top five results from the source one and top five results from the source two. So which tuple in first result matches with which tuple in the second result? That is the question. That is, that is the third layer of computation. Again, it is a bipartite matching problem. We go for a similar greedy matching there. We already have the similarities of the tuples. So we use that to, to do a similar greedy matching for the source result sets as well. Uh, that kind of uh, finishes the basic source rank and uh, our, our ranking problem. There are um, uh, three extensions to this problem, that is collision detection, topical source rank, and result ranking. I will go, go one slide each on each of these extensions. The, one of the problem you might have noticed with the source rank is that a source can create copies of itself and boost its own ranking because in uh, that way, they, these guys, that source would get a lot of other sources which really agree with them, and uh, uh, they can boost everyone's rank. It's similar to the link spamming in the in the surface web, and it's a recent article in the New York Times which says uh, J.C. Penney is doing similar things to boost their ranking. So uh, this is going to be prevalent once this uh, uh, so deep web search or integration is uh, popular um, stuff. So, uh, our basic solution for this is to, uh, the basic idea for the solution is that we um, go for a similar sampling based approach for the collision detection, but instead of using genuine query, we used uh, large answer queries. By large answer queries, what I mean is really unspecified queries like DA or DVD. The idea is that if you send the query like, answer like a question, query like that to two sources and they return exactly the same answers, they are likely to be colluding with each other. So uh, that is the basic idea of the collision detection. So similar to this uh, source rank computation, we compute uh, we compute agreement over this large answer set queries and uh, compute the agreement between the sources and subtract the agreement from the original agreement we computed based on the genuine queries and that this compensated agreement is used to compute the source rank instead of the uh, instead of the original agreement that is the basic idea behind the collision detection and the second extension is the topic specific source rank or tsr this is this is in fact this work is done after uh, after the proposal defense in collaboration with uh, Manish Cha, who is actually a, uh, who is graduated and working in Amazon now. He was a uh, master student. So the idea here is to uh, so one of the premise uh, on our original source rank was that uh, endorsement or the agreement by any source is equally valuable as endorsement or uh, agreement by any other source. Here we modified this a little bit and assume that uh, agreement by the sources in the same topic or the domain is more more valuable or weighted than the uh, agreement by or by the sources in the some other domain. So based on this premise, our assumption is that this modification of the premise is going to improve the ranking for the multi-topic environment or multi-domain environment. So. Uh, the endorsement by a book source is uh, uh, is more valuable for a another book source is more valuable for a book source than endorsement by a, from a camera source. That is the idea. So based on that, what we did is instead of having one set of sampling queries, we have one we have one set of sampling queries for each domain. We have movie sampling queries and uh, book sampling queries and so on. So based on these sampling queries, we uh, so for the movie topic or the movie domain, we built our source graph based only on samples using the movie uh, movie queries. And if you have n domains, we have n uh, source graph like this. And uh, for movie, uh, movie source rank is computed solely based on the movie source rank. And if you have n uh, uh, domains, we have n rankings. So the next question is which ranking to use when a query comes. 
what we do here is whenever somebody enters a query, when, uh, whenever the user enters a query, we classify that query to a particular topic or the domain using a, a, a name-based class, name classifier. And um, class for this, and this particular class, um, uh, once we know the class, we use the right source rank to select the sources. That is the modification we do there. To be precise, we don't do a hard classification. The name-based classifier gives a probability of this probability distribution over the classes uh, to uh, over the classes uh, 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 for the fractional membership of the query over the classes. So we weight the source ranks according to this this distribution and uh, um, formulate a final source rank. So. This is uh, the second extension, and the third extension. This is also performed after the uh, after the uh, thesis defense. Uh, pro sorry, after the proposal defense. So here, uh, this is about the result rank. This is the kind of the final step in the in searching uh, for the query, uh, searching for the results. So what we did is we, we got back all the uh, we selected the sources, sent the queries to them, got back the results, and now we have to rank it. So there are similar problems like importance and trustworthiness here. We have to deal with this problem in the result level now. So what we do here is we again compute the agreement between these tuples here. We build a tuple graph, a tuple graph or the result graph here. The difference is that here vertices are the tuples instead of the sources, and the links between them are the uh, are the director links are the are the agreement between the tuples. So um, it looks, uh, it is almost similar to the source rank. The difference here is that we use the second order agreement here instead of the Markov full Markov random bar. By second order agreement, what I mean is, uh, you, uh, it means that first order agreement is just the similarity between two tuples. Second order agreement says that not just that these two guys are agreeing, but they have common friends also. That is what we mean by second order agreement. So this is in fact we'll finish in two iterations instead of the k iterations for a Markov random walk. So it's a little bit more faster, and this is a query time process. So time is a very valuable real estate. The query response time is the most valuable real estate for any search engine. By the way, both result ranking as well as the uh, as well as the source ranking is implemented in this prototype, but not really the uh, topic specific source rank or the factor. Product. So the, uh, I got the evaluation set results. Uh, so I'm not showing the entire set of evaluations here, just uh, representative evaluations from uh, representative results from uh, some of the sources. So our baseline, two of our baseline method, one is Cori. Cori is a method, a source selection method used in the text databases uh, commonly. So what it means is this basically works based on the number of uh, is indexing. Uh, we create an index for the text databases and we compute the matching documents from the uh, from the uh, each the data source and that is used to select the data source. So this basically works based on the query similarity between the collective query similarity between the uh, of the documents in the in the text database. And the second is the coverage, which which we adapted a little, which is used in relational databases, we adapted a little bit by considering the top care, the relevance of the top care documents based on the on the samples. And then I actually compared it with the Google product search as well, which is again as I mentioned, it's a beta <coughs> system by from Google. And we consider the statistical significance for all our experiments. Again, I will, uh, I'm quickly giving some of this uh, sample results. So what here uh, it is what this is our guide, so Sang is our guide. We are comparing the top cap, top five precision here. We are comparing with Google Base. We are comparing with coverage. We are comparing with Google Base domain here. By Google Base domain, what I mean is this is same as the Google Base, but here we are using 675 book sources. We limited the Google Base to search only on this uh, only on the 675 book sources. That is what Google Base domain. So if you look at this, we are considerably improving the. I think there's a question. Hello. So. Uh, uh, Yi and Hai, are both of you, are you still there online? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm here. Yeah, we uh, no, no. had a click, so we thought like somebody dropped. Okay. No, somebody may ask a question. I should have a question. What sure. is the ground truth here? So, what we did is we send the, uh, then uh, we manually classified the uh, results. We send the queries and uh, uh, mark the uh, results. Pardon? Uh, by, the, by the author. But 
to avoid the author bias, what we did is we mixed the results from all these methods together. So when the author is doing the, when I'm doing the classification, I don't really know who, which is from which. That is one pre one precaution we do to we, we did to avoid the author bias. It's not really uh, by the external use so. so. So uh, you, you had to do uh, getting a significant research, uh, statistically significant difference. You had to do a uh, somewhat large scale user study. That is uh, kind of hard. So the second is on the trust result. So the uh, trust we did such a way that we selected a, a fraction of the sources and corrected the uh, data within these sources and. Uh, we re recomputed the rank of the sources after the corruption. So we compared the core coverage and uh, source rank here. So one uh, one uh, one per one specific thing we did is that while corrupting the sources, we corrupted only the part of the tuple which are not really part of the query. Uh, for example, the query is on the title, so we corrupted all other fields in the tuples other than the titles. So the one problem with any coercibility based method is that they will not be able to capture the corruptions in the fields which is not specified in the queries. So this is uh, uh, so when you see the results, the source rank goes down. This is y-axis is decrease in rank. Source rank goes down. Uh, source rank of the corrupted sources goes down linearly with the corruption levels. On the other hand, query and uh, coverage remains almost the same, that is they are insensitive to the corruption of the data and the sources. So these are trusted results, and this is on the topic specific source rank, so there are more results here, but uh, this is one, one of the results, so here what we are showing is, we, we compared it across four, uh, four topics, total of 1440 sources, so we compared the topic specific DSR here, with the query similarity, TF-IDF based query similarity with the weight. So here the non-uniform weights, 0.1 for TSR query similarity is to compensate for the higher dispersion for the query similarity because query similarity range is higher. So even though the, uh, the weights are higher, it's almost giving equal, uh, it's not really proportional to this weight, but it's, a, it's somewhat uh, equal weightage for both of them. So TS topic specific source and combined with query similarity. So the point here is that this is our guy, the rightmost parts. It is in fact uh, doing much better than uh, Google Base and Cori here. Uh, where is the source rank? Uh, this is uh, just on the research, uh, sorry, this, this case the source rank, DSR. Yeah, there is another, uh, so there is another, uh, sorry, yeah, there is a direct comparison with undifferentiated source rank. I'm not showing it in the slides, it's in the uh, writer. Yeah, but uh, yeah, if I want to put it here, where is it? Uh, th that's roughly, 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 roughly. Where is it? Uh, it really Basically, is. I want to compare TSR with your source rank. Uh, yes, I have. A, do you want me to pull up the TCS? No, no, no. Just tell me roughly. Um, you don't need to tell me exact. So, what is your? It will be better. Uh, if I remember, which one is better, basically? It will be better than these guys, uh -huh. but it will be somewhere here. Uh, it is not as good as the as good as the. Uh, yeah, you see, uh, that actually when you mentioned the two rankings, yeah. I had this question. Like, if you just do one ranking, should should this suffice? Uh, yes, it, and, it, it uh, does. If, so source ranking, then that means it's irrelevant if this one works, right? Source rank. Source rank is worse than top TSR. Uh, the, uh, yeah, that's for a multi so multi do, multi domain environment. It is true, but we haven't compared TSR and source rank in a single domain environment. In a multi-domain environment, it is true that DSR is in fact doing better than the better than the source rank. So suppose the user is really giving like uh, uh, as in my factor prototype, they are specifying that okay, uh, I'm I want movies. In such an environment, yes, source rank is not uh, yeah, because uh, ultimately I would like to have the result, right? I don't care about and which source is more relevant for me. Hmm. Probably it's relevant for some companies, right? Hmm. For a user, mm -hmm. I would only care about the results. Mm -hmm. So if the results are better for TSR, 
It's okay. It's all your yeah, system. Uh, results, <laughs> yeah, results are better than... So, uh, I just want to point out that results are better for TSR, for a multi-domain environment. That is, we, that is a step, you know, if you have multiple domain databases in a, in a particular... Uh, okay. I, but that's the general case. Yeah, right? that's, that's true. Yeah. I, I think, yeah, source time you can consider it as a basic method and this, is, this can yeah. be as an extension to this thing. You can very well say that, but you don't... Uh, okay. Between the two. It's I, all your systems. Yeah, if you, I want to use one. I don't want to use Yes. Two. If you project the TSR to a single domain or a single topic, you will get the source line. That is the way I would like to see it. If you, have, if you do not have multiple topics, it's, it is no, basically... But both will become source rank. I think well, it's just one source rank. That if you now establish that TSR is better than source rank, and Manish already got an MS, which... No, and also the originally the source like you care about like which source is more reliable. So this is like more cost way, a cost way to say, okay, if anything from that source, I would trust it. But now you have this more refined approach, right? You just say, I don't care about the source. I can write the results. Oh, no. no? Uh, I, I'm not sure whether I understood correctly. So here, the only difference we are making is like we are... You write the results here. Uh, sorry, you no, said. no, no. Not the results. Sorry. These are actually... We look at the results for the evaluation. But the evaluation is exactly the same. Uh, evaluation is exactly the same as it of uh, this thing. Okay, so in the very beginning, is based on the results I, I took the notes. Okay, in the very beginning, you said that you addressed two problems, two ranking problems. Yes. One is the source ranking, one is the result ranking. The result ranking results is the nest rank. This is the topic specific source rank itself. Okay. Result ranking is coming in. All right. And I also have a question for the previous slide. Sure. Previous slide. So, you have this line, mm -hmm. and this line, you said that goes worse. It goes up. What does that mean? Uh, that is uh, y axis. Is the, sorry, y axis is the decrease in the rank. But uh, so, so as your the system is worse than the other. System? No, when the corruption increase, you are it, you are supposed to the corrupted sources rank is supposed to decrease if your method is sensitive to the corruption. Is this one source or not? It, it, it is actually we uh, randomly selected a fraction of sources and corrupted them and see how it is uh, it decreases. So it's like a number of sources, it's just not just one source. So you have a set of sources that are pure mm. and a set of sources that are corrupted? Yes. And these show that they don't recognize there's a corruption in the subset and they rank them the same as are corrupted. Uh, uh, the, in the corruption level of that so corrupted subset, we increase, we increase the corruption levels. So if your method is really sensitive to the corruption, it should go down with the corruption levels, right? The so rank of the corrupted sources should go down. No, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. You just say your method can detect corruption. Right? Yes. Right? Yes. That's all. Yes. So what is the indication that a ranking method can detect corruption? That is, the corrupted sources should go down in ranks. Uh, no, but if I, I'm robust, I'm also okay. I can deal with the corruption. Uh, no, this is not corruption, no. this is bait and switch. Yeah. What he's modeling here is people having all the right records and then putting one cent in uh -huh. the movie. Yeah. Trying to get you to come to theirs because their product is so much better because they're selling it for so much less. Yeah. His algorithm will detect that that is a false tuple. The query similarity based methods won't look at the price. Uh -huh. They'll just yeah. see, oh, this is Godfather. And then they'll sort by price and give you this bogus result of, of a penny movie. Yeah, yeah. No, so, if you... There are two ways, right? One is, this one can detect. Automatically, but it's not, it's not based no, on no, specific but, bait and switch. Yeah, but uh, it's not necessarily... Yeah, it's a detection. But also, if I think about this, I have a robust system. I can also select a good one. Mm -hmm. No, even you corrupt, even you corrupt. But this one just says you can. No, but, but the no, user, no, end user, user cannot, end user can tell relevance, but cannot tell trustworthiness. Correct. Trust so that's the problem. So suppose, I mean, this is the classic question. So suppose I ask you who <coughs> made Love and Death, who's the director of Love and Death, and you tell me it's Francis Ford Coppola, 
if i if i'm not testing you then i don't know who actually made love on death right and so you gave me the wrong answer it turns out it's woody allen after you gave me the answer is too late to know whether or not it's trustworthy before is when you need to know the trustworthiness that's why we have reputation system so multiple stores on the amazon but before there's already okay. like a you know user reviews instead of user reviews he's doing upfront you know okay. separate so evaluation so this one tells you that the yeah. source is so, is is untrustworthy is fishy exactly you are right in terms of relevance in the sense if i give you irrelevant results the user only gets irritated it but they can still know that it's not relevant to them but they'll never be able to tell that they're trustworthy i mean unless they happen to know the answer already <laughs> in which yeah. case why ask yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of you have to ask an expert so it is we are using other sources as experts yeah, that is ഫോം Uh, you know maybe that might be the easier thing because the computer connection seems bad the audio is not coming through is that okay uh, okay uh, yeah, so can you kind of email me your phone number and then i'll call you while this is continuing okay just email me your phone number and uh, such a case of us yeah we could yeah, 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 so in this case like you are showing the star 0.1 right mm-hmm. you okay. star 0.1 also oh, for it is so where is the star along or did you do say core is 0.1 which takes 0.9 coefficient uh, mm-hmm. so in this case your tsa 0.1 is not just tsa it's not just tsa it also the yes, 0.9 uh, comes from the coefficient yes that's so true so where is the star along or uh, Uh, did you do core is 0.1 where basically it is 0.9 core similar to plus core in fact dsr alone is not doing well in this case we i and it's not as good as dsr for uh, point one for sure i'm not very very sure where the we have a, we had an experiment there but uh, this doing much better than uh, stable on dsr okay in the in the multi domain so program core is 0.1 but it core is 0.1 where you get score from core as uh, so the mouth part is 0.1 and then core is similar to 0.1 because you are right right now you comparing apples and oranges in one of them you have what is a core similar to the other one you just have core you can't tell the core similar to maybe if, if you put up the index you got to go better so what we did is we in fact actually set it proportional to the we got the scores for a sample set we computed this a uh, uh, dispersion of each statistical dispersion of both these scores and we uh, set it proportional to the statistical dispersion that's what we did so this is someone like 0.5 0.5 weightage for that yes um, i would uh, this ghostly based on cross validation or mark must try and error which combination really gives you the best results so uh, yes uh, tsr alone other combinations will do varying de- degrees of accuracy but likely to be best that this particular combination again it's apples and oranges and there is no i mean hard and fast way to compare it other than trying cross validation or trying it with you mean cori cori is not one why don't you it is it isn't cori a query similarity based method so the Okay. The thing is that Cori co- co- is Cori similarity based, but what it does is it uh, it, it is like uh, calculate the uh, when I when I uh, it creates an index and it sees how many documents in that particular data sources matches to the this particular Cori or looking at the inverted index. That is what it does. Uh, what 
Yes, uh, Corey is in fact a Corey similarity based method, but there are refinements over time, right? uh, over the basic index. You uh, do some kind of uh, smoothing and things like that. Okay, just, just one second, let me make sure. Uh, Yi, are you able to hear us now? On the, I mean, can you, are you connected right now? Yeah, yeah good. Oh, yeah, good. Go ahead. Now you can ask your question. Oh, actually, I think it's better to hear you from the software than over the phone. So maybe I can ask my question now, but then I will keep silent until the end of the defense. That's fine. So that way I can say so well, and then at the end we can have some closing. That's questions. fine. That, that's fine. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so, so I just have one quick question here, uh, just following the discussion that's coming up. Um, so I think it's a follow-up with the one question about the corruption of the source. So my impression was the corruption in this context just means two sides have a large overlap of their content. So for example, if one website has a lot of mirror websites, they might be considered as corruption in this case. So I feel like in that case, they promise to not have a penalty, but they should, as long as they don't get a boost because of this highly overlapped uh, mirror website, but they don't necessarily need to have a penalty. Uh, I'm not sure about that. I think uh, their ranks should go down. Uh, suppose a uh, source is putting so many say false phrases, like they uh, uh, put so many tuples with say 0.1 dollar, right, without having that item in the inventory. Uh, it is nice but for that particular, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I agree if they make multiple copies of false information, that's really bad. But if I understand correctly, the corruption here doesn't mean similarity. It does not mean the information is necessary for So, for example, suppose I have multiple mirror facts. All of them are true. It's just, for example, this is a huge company. They want to improve the network uh, response time, so they have multiple mirror facts. In that case, they may also get penalties. It's not really because their content is bad. It's just because they have multiple copies, then they get a penalty. Okay, that's a different. So yeah, there's a slight um, confusion, slight misunderstanding here. That aspect you are talking is about the collusion. That is the other method. Here we are talking about the uh, about the. Uh, so in case of collusion, we are not penalizing them for having multiple copies. We are just, the collusion method would would just discount the agreement from the mirrors and uh, uh, we are just preventing the sources from boosting the ranks based on that and that is perfectly uh, perfectly reasonable to say that we should not penalize them and that is what the our collision uh, detection method in fact would do but here what we are talking is about in fact the data corruption like the false phrases or what we did is in fact replacing the other attributes with the random strings in fact it's corrupted data so the more corrupted data one sources for example nine out of ten tuples in the amazons are false phrases in that case it makes sense for us to uh, rank the amazon as a source lower because it's no longer a credible source Actually, okay, I guess I was confused about collusion and corruption. Yes, so that, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, so, Raju, I suggest to uh, put me back. Uh, I mean, I suggest to have my phone and I will just use that software and at the end I, I, I can... I, I, you can, uh, Yi, you can continue to use the software. Uh, I mean, this thing is can just be on, on the parallel. And whenever you we want to talk, it, yeah. just, you know, um, unmute it and talk in the phone. That should be okay. fine. That should be fine. I will give a try, but okay. if I hear a lot of echo, I may hang up. Okay. So, yeah, okay. So, so please. I, I'll just put this in mute right now. So, okay. Maybe you can call and hire us. No, he's not talking. It's the uh, resonance. I think I'll just hang up. Okay, I'm going to hang him up. Yeah. Okay. I'll see better. Yeah, good. Uh, so, any other questions? Yeah, actually. Um, so, it's related to this, but I have actually the opposite intuition. How much is this topic specificness actually adding to source rank? I'm concerned that it's an incremental improvement. Uh, it, it's actually there's a there's a statistically significant improvement. Uh, it is there in the slides as a different subject. Yeah. Statistically significant. I mean, it's a statistically significant half a percent. Yeah, they co to quantify that probably <laughs> I don't remember the figures exactly, but it's not really trivial. You can I can uh, probably I can show it in the. Uh, write up that those graphs, those results are there in the write up. How does the uh, normal source rank at this differ? Okay, 
but this total gap over the state of the art is half of it from the topic specificness and half of it from the source rank, or is it 70 30, 90 10, um, 20 maybe it's, 80? It's 70. It's, we are saying that source rank itself improves significantly over the state of the art. Right. So this is on top of that. And uh, what are the contributions? It's not really easy to tell when you combine the experiments, but topic specifics improve over the source rank. That yeah, but it takes more time. Right. It takes more time and more implementation costs. Yes, that's true. That's true. Oh, yeah. uh, it takes more time in sense it's an offline time. So, crowding is more complicated. Uh, so, if you are crowded, crowded, crowders would be working in the background all the time. So, that's true. Sure. So, so do you probably consider the query similarity for the basic language? Query, the <coughs> GPS, the, the GPS. Yeah, we don't, we are not sure what Google Base is doing, it's completely internal to them, but it looks like Cori similarity. Cori is... I mean, you, you can combine, so if you get a result from GBase, and you combine Cori similar as your TSR to the one by the other one. Yeah, well, I mean, the, uh, TSR doesn't, Google Base doesn't give us the score, they just give us the results. So. Score uh, cannot be compared with Google Base, but other method it is possible. You can have so many, you can have other combinations as well. I agree. Can we go ahead? Right? Actually, we are yeah, that's fine. behind here. Yeah. Sorry. No, that's fine. You don't need to worry about the time. If we are asking questions, you just keep answering. Okay, sure. Unless you have a flight to catch or something. <laughs> <laughs> don't be <laughs> today. Excuse us. This is not <laughs> okay right now, so. <laughs> If we are asking questions, you answer. That's it. So, uh, tuple rank, uh, precision comparison. So this is the result ranking I was talking about. So what we are comparing uh, two, two measures here. What is NDCG, normalized discounted cumulative gain. What it means is uh, you wait, uh, if you give good results in the top, that is more better than give, getting good results in the bottom. So it consider the rank also into consideration while comparing the quality of the results. That is, what about, that is about NDCG. And we have uh, okay. So we have uh, we compared it with the Google Base directly. We compared with query similarity that is just TFID similarity with the query, and we compared the uh, double rank. So double rank is doing our guy is doing better than other two machines by significant amounts. There's a question. Sure. Actually, Shifi's question is very related to uh, search. I think ultimately, the third question is, where do you get your performance gain? That is what basic. So it is from oh, the combination. Okay, sure. Remember, this is point one, point nine. Uh, yes, the uh, yeah, that the right, point nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it's the one. Mm -hmm. So it's like because of this combination, mm -hmm. or <coughs> something else, or, or really, it's a TSR. Do you see this? And then his question is, in order for you to verify this, you can combine GBase or Cori with whatever query similarity, so if you can get some so the good performance. Job. Yeah. No, yeah. Okay. I know, I know you're understanding, and you say Sorry. they are query similarity, but you still can combine. Yes, that is true. Then you can verify where does your game come from. <laughs> That's, I think, when I understand the central sure. question, I try to understand this way. Like, where do you get gain? So, yeah, it, uh, the part of the gain is from the <coughs> source line, and the rest is from the. Uh, and the Bill was also asking the same question, so many people yeah. were asking the same question. So, uh, <laughs> all, I can say is that <laughs> all I can say is that we <laughs> gain from everything. What, what comes from who? This is like, yeah, the combination does better. Well, on the next slide, you do actually partially address this question, right? This is on the result ranking, but here we did not use the result ranking. This is standard on source rank here. No, no, but on the next slide you actually have two of your own methods, right? Query similarity is sort of the base on the tuple rank built on top of. So here we can actually have an idea of how significant is the tuple rank idea. So this is the second order agreement. Tuple rank is, is the second order computation on top of query similarity. So we can actually see them side by side. Yeah, here we are doing experiments in a simpler environment. We have a single domain environment. So, as the parameters are smaller, it's actually small setup experiments would give you more indication. Otherwise, yeah, 
Pastor. Is it feedback? I don't know. It's a very strange feedback. Yeah, it's, it's, it's music. music. I think music is music. Any other questions? <laughs> uh, so, so far we completed the first part of the talk. That is on the deeper ranking. Now we have gone to go to the higher ranking. And you have a system, right? Yes, factor. <coughs> factor yes. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, is it mute from this one? No, no, that's fine. Yeah, he just mute this one. Yeah, right. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Now let's see. Trust the external coming. They're not connected anymore. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the ad ranking, uh, we had two higher parts. One is first part is on ranking, which I completed before the thesis proposal, and the second part is on auction mechanisms and analysis, which is the second, which uh, the work was done after the proposal. So I will go over a little faster on the first part and give a little more time on the auction second part. So, okay, I told you. So, we have two parts here ranking and pricing of ads and ranking of the deeper. So, before going into the, this part, let me ask you the question like, what is common between Google, Facebook, and Groupon or many other providers? So, the thing is that we can't, we tend, tend to think them like as social media and um, search engines and uh, deals and so on. But in fact, all of them are selling ads or all of them are ad companies or online ads. If not just these three uh, the companies or the billion dollar search engine or so, even the entire ecosystem of the Quero web has been supported by the uh, online advertisements or ads from the small mom and pop stores to the Google. Everyone makes their profit from there. It supports what are happening in the world. So it's an important area. Before going into the details, let me give you a quick overview of what is happening for the uh, ads or the ranked ads. The specific part, problem I'm dealing with here is on the ranked ads or targeted ads we call. Whenever you search in Google, you get the ads on the right side of the pane now, top of the results also. So they are in fact ranked based on certain parameters. So what is happening is the users engage the search queries like digital SLR cameras. Other day says, for example, Nikon, Nikon or Canon <coughs> bid, bid for the keyword. They say like, Canon would say like, okay, whenever uh, somebody searches for the digital, uh, cam digital cameras or digital SLRs camera, show my ad and if somebody searches, I will pay you one dollar. Or so if somebody clicks on my link, I will pay you one dollar, pay one dollar to Google. And Canon would say, okay, we'll pay 7.75 dollar, and so on. So once this, what the ranking is performed by the search engine. So search engine considers these bid amounts, what are the other days <coughs> the bid for the keyword. It considers the relevance of the ad to the uh, keyword also. The relevance is important because unless the ad is relevant to the user, they are not going to go, go and click. So this is a bid sell for the click. Unless they click, the search engine will not get any money. So the ad should be relevant to the uh, uh, query. In addition to that, the bid amount, bid amount should be high as well to get make a search engine to get a, get the maximum profit. So whatever these guys pay for per click would go to the uh, search engine. That is the high level picture here. So before, let me, let me clarify that in fact, even though the first part is about the data rank or deeper rank. The second part is about the ad ranking. These are in fact closely connected problem, or I would say the extensions are the same problem. So the ranking we can define is as ordering of entities or the items to maximize the expected profit. So the difference between two ranking problems is only in utilities. If the utility is equal to relevance or the informational requirements of the user, we will get the data ranking or the uh, deeper rank or deeper ranking. It's a special case of the data ranking. We substitute the utility as dollar, that is the amount or money such as it is getting, we will get the ad ranking. So this is the overall unifying theme across these two parts of the uh, thesis. Uh, first part, I got to the first part that is optimal ranking uh, and the generalization. So to quickly gloss, gloss over the current ranking mechanisms, uh, they, Google and MSN uh, uh, used to rank 
based on bid amount times relevance of the ads. Uh, and Yahoo uh, initially used to rank up, uh, based on just on bid amount. In fact, it was uh, one rather big Overture, another company called Overture, which was acquired by Yahoo, and they used it for a while. Later, they changed here. But anyway, that was the state of the few years back. So here we, the enhancement we are making here is we consider the mutual influences between the ads in addition to what these guys are doing. We are they are trying to max. In fact, this is trying to maximize the expected profit without considering mutual influences between the ads. We add we maximize expected profit with considering mutual influences. That is the contribution we are making. Yeah, I've uh, defined the mutual influences in a few slides. So everything is. So uh, the optimization problem or the ranking optim ranking is optimization problem based on the usage browsing model. So I will quickly give you the, what is usage browsing model here. The for an ad, the user would come to the first ad. He may click the ad with the probability is equal to relevance of the ad, that is R of A1, or he may lead the browsing the ads with the probability is equal to abandonment probability or gamma of A1, or he may go to the next if they don't do any of these actions, it will go they will go to the <coughs> next ad. So that with the probability is 1 minus R A1, gamma A1, and this will continue. So this user model is not we are not claiming it as our contribution. There are the, when we did this work, there was a um, uh, you saw, there was a model called cascade model which was not considering the gamma or abandonment probability but all of the parameters that was empirically verified also but later user model came considering all these parameters and even estimating these parameters so if this is an empirically validated user model but uh, not by us but the other people. Uh, there are different things because when I ask a query, I will need to look at the results from top down. That's correct. But advertisements not necessarily yeah, uh, both the same way. This, in fact, this is. I'm sure that this is validated for the advertisements. I guess that this is validated for the uh, for the uh, search as well. But uh, uh, as, as search, it was previously there. Yeah, sure. But this particular preference, this particular paper was for the ads. So the uh, mutual influence is that similar ads placed above a particular <coughs> ad would reduce the click, click probability for a ad. So if you have two eBay ads, the uh, second eBay ad is likely not to get good. The second is that if you have ID relevant ad above a particular ad, user would click those ads and leave browsing and they may not may never reach a particular ad. This is the second mutual influence. And if you have a really boring ad above you, user would fed up of the uh, results and would leave, that is abandonment problem, that which these are what we consider. So our main research on ranking phase is that if you rank according to this for this function, that is dollar a times ra over ra plus gamma a, where r is the relevance, gamma is the abandonment probability, dollar is the cost per click. Cost per click is that amount the search engine is getting when somebody is clicking on that ad. The uh, profit for the search, uh, the revenue for the search entity is going to be optimal. So there are multiple ways of, a yeah, couple of types of proofs for this. Initial proof was inductive, and then we did uh, uh, direct deductive proofs. Anyway, uh, I'm not showing the proofs, but intuitively what it is saying is like this is the uh, generated revenue, expected generated revenue, and this is the consumed view probability. So if you rank ads according to the ratio of the expected revenue to the consumed view probability, your profits are going to be optimal. It's the intuition or the physical significance of this quantity. Uh, so this also I covered uh, during my thesis proposal, but this is significant in terms of the organization of thesis, so I will go off a little bit. So, uh, this is the for, uh, optimal ranking formula just now I presented. What I, the only difference I made is instead of dollar I changed it to a more general term called utility, U of E. And this is our optimal ranking formula. So if you substitute that utility is equal to dollar, that is for ads, we'll get the ad ranking formula. This is the formula just now I presented. So 
in this, if you assume that the abandonment probability is zero, that gamma a is equal to zero, we will get the existing Yahoo ranking. That's the assumption, yeah, that's the assumption behind the Yahoo ranking. This is in fact by our contribution, this particular specific generalization. And if you say that uh, gamma uh, abandonment probability is negatively proportional to the relevance of the ad, we will get the Google uh, uh, ranking. Uh, so this is the assumption behind the Google ranking. And that is, Google ranking is optimal under this assumption. That is another way of putting it. So similarly, if you put the relevance, we'll get the optimal relevance ranking. And on this, if you assume, if you ignore the abandonment probability altogether, we get the PRP or sort by relevance, the most commonly used ranking uh, uh, method. This is called probability ranking principle, came formulated by Robertson a couple of decades back. And there are so, semi formula formal proofs for this, but not in this direction, not in this way, but so two of the new things, these dotted arrows, if we on the document ranking, if we consider the abandonment probability is negative proportional to relevance, we get a new ranking called R D uh, times relevance R D. So here uh, R D, there is a subtle difference between R D and relevance D. What I mean by relevance D RD here is that perceived relevance. Perceived relevance is the relevance inferred by the user looking just at the search snippet. By search snippet, what I mean is just that title and small description Google is showing on the page. And relevance D is the actual relevance of the document. So the Google the user decides to search, click or not looking at the snippet or based on the perceived relevance. And the utility he actually gets is the what he, what he gets from the document. That is the difference between RD and relevance. Yeah. So this particular ranking distinguishes between uh, perceived relevance and RD and to maximize the utility. And similarly, if you uh, assume that perceived relevance is, is equal to actual relevance, you get another ranking, which is considered abandonment ranking in addition to the abandonment in addition to the what we are is considering. Uh, so now again, more formally, this is the first part of my uh, document ranking falls in the first, the right branch of the tree, and uh, ad ranking falls in the left branch of the tree. So it's a little more formal. Uh, so these are uh, sorry, sure. Uh, so we saw Juan's presentation of planning yesterday about adding diversity to results, mm -hmm. and you know, when I started, Ulas was doing diversification, uh, as I recall, of, of answers to results. Would one of these other ranking mechanisms for documents actually allow you to show that you should diversify result sets? Uh, in fact, any of these formulas I just showed doesn't consider the uh, diversity. So, I, but my part of the thesis, as part of the thesis, I show that considering the diversity or optimizing the diversity is NB hard even for the very basic models. Well, it's very difficult to optimize it, but in terms of defining what's optimal. This is not computationally, this is not taking into account the computational difficulties. This is saying just what is the optimal thing to do. And this doesn't consider the diversity aspect at all in this optimization. This well, what about that the third error? You the that, eBay ads, uh, yeah, sure. so. that the, you, you, you have arrows there for the abandonment probability is negatively proportional to the relevance of the ad you are looking at. But this third arrow, or this rightmost arrow, seems to be saying that gamma D could be some arbitrary thing. The abandonment probability could depend upon whether or not you, like, because you just showed me an ad that was highly similar to the one above it, I leave. Because you've stopped showing me interesting things. Yeah. Am I overgeneralizing here, or is, I mean, is Gamma's... No, it is. Here, that? the abandonment probability, does it, it is not positional dependent. Here, it is dependent only on the ad. So, so D is the index that you, you can just give an ad with respect to your query and you judge yeah. that abandonment probability from the click loss of it's a static problem. you can say that it's static yeah. you can judge from this then. not based on the diversity yeah. not dynamic value. okay so between I guess either the prior slide or two slides ago and now you've assumed that gamma is dependent only upon the specific document now even before gamma was not dependent on any of the previous documents but uh, it's just a function of that particular document or the ad. Can we see the slide on mutual influences? So this does not mention, is, is there a fourth category that's missing here about diversity? Uh, it's, it, it, 
so the, the diversity aspect is in fact uh, uh, dependent on the uh, other at space depot but the relevance and the uh, uh, abandonment probability is not dependent on the other at, uh, at place here place depot means at least we assume that in fact it is but when you consider that again the probability is likely to be combinatorial and likely to enter the uh, likely to I, I don't have proof there but it's likely to become uh, so the interactive. number one category that sounds like it's the inverse of diversity this is the user's residual relevance given what they've already seen right that is diversity yes but yes so do you do anything for number one category here or you this no no so in fact what happened is I, I pro we Prove that in fact considering this aspect is not an intractable, optimal ranking is intractable considering this aspect, and we just go ahead and consider two and three. So yeah, that proof is included because the intractable rankings are theoretically interesting, but pragmatically it's not going to make sense for most of them. So diversity, there are non-optimal methods covered in other papers and things like that, but none of them really prove optimality. It cannot. We show that even simple diversity methods, simple similarity methods like binary similarity, uh, the ranking considering diversity is NPR. It's even worse. It's, we even show that constant ratio approximation algorithms are not likely uh, for the considering diversity. Uh, so these are the not real experiments, simulation experiments. So instead of going through the details, I would quickly say that what it is showing is this is our guy, uh, green is our guy, and uh, these are Yahoo and uh, Google ranking. What it is saying that for the range of abandonment probability and uh, y axis, x axis, can think as we change the range in the uh, ratio of abandonment probability and relevance. For the range of abandonment probability and relevance, our method is in fact doing better than the uh, common digits. This is just a way of somewhat quantifying based on separation experiments. Difference. We just draw that it's better, but the proof doesn't say how much better. So this is a way of quantifying the difference between the uh, between the proposed strategy and the competitors. Now I got to the auction mechanism. So the difference is that we I just mentioned that search engine do the pricing as well as the ranking. The, the pricing. Pricing means how much the advertiser is going to pay the search engine whenever they click. An interesting fact is that this need not be same as the bid amount they are pricing. For example, if it's a second price auction, uh, the amount each advertiser would be paying would be the next highest bid. So how much uh, they bid, uh, how much they pay depends on their bid as well as the pricing strategy of the search engine. So if we can take with this pricing strategy to get desirable properties <coughs> for the auctions. So once we tie up a pricing strategy, we, we get a complete mechanism and we can analyze the entire dynamics. So this is called, uh, it's what we do in the second part. Before going to that, let me quickly say what the Nash equilibrium means. What happens in the computational advertisement is that the advertisers, typically the software agents, can change their bit hundreds of times a day. So they will keep experimenting with these bits and try see how their position changes, how their click-through rate changes, and basically trying to improve their profit. So the Nash equilibrium is a stage such that none of the advertisers can unilaterally change their bits and increase the profit. For the particular bit vector, every advertiser's bid is the best response to the all other advertisers' bid. That is is called Nash equilibrium. So eventually it is somewhat like a stable state. So generalists believe that you may reach a Nash equilibrium eventually at a says by keep changing and finally they reach an optima. It's like reaching global optima. Or, you know, and that is a stable state of a new spot the other day says. So I uh, uh, show the proposed pricing, then establish the existence of a Nash equilibrium and compare to the celebrated VCG auction. So VCG is the Vickery Clark Grouse auction. This is a a very famous auction mechanism and it's, uh, it's a Nobel Prize winning auction mechanism in fact and uh, it's a standard practice in the auction theory to compare the auction mechanism with VCG and see how the profits and uh, for the search engine as well as would compare with the VCG. 
So this is mostly a theoretical work. I'm not going into details of the proofs. I'm just showing the results. So I define a quantity uh, called W A, the weight of an act, which is relevance of the act over relevance plus gamma i. So this is just a notation convenience. And uh, suppose the acts are ordered in this order, W A B A. In this order, let me denote i add as a. And I will define a new quantity called u i again for notation convenience, which is just the sum of abandonment probability and uh, sorry relevance and abandonment probability of an act. U i is the sum of relevance and abandonment probability of an act. So the pricing I define the pricing as R i plus one u i times p a plus one and R i over R i times u i. What does this mean is like uh, R i plus one is the next add in this order and p a plus one is the bit of the next add in this particular order W A B A order. So one thing to be noticed here is that the price for a particular uh, particular how did I say it doesn't depend on the price on the uh, price for the uh, his bit but the next highest bit. A couple of nice properties sorry of this mechanism is that the payment never of an advertiser will never exceed the bit. If somebody is exceeding two dollars he might be paying up to two dollars or less than two dollars he will never pay more than that. It's a nice property because every advertiser, it's easier for the advertisers to uh, uh, bid their true values, maximum values they are, uh, they are ready to pay. And, and they are sure that they will never pay more than that. This is called individual rationality property in the game theory terminology. So otherwise, uh, payment of the advertisers increases monotonically with its position. If he wants to go up in the uh, ranking, his payment would always be increasing or remaining the same to never decreases. Those are two properties. And this is a Nash equilibrium statement. We show that there is a, a Nash equilibrium in the pure strategy. This is, uh, this is uh, John Nash. Uh, what we are saying is that if the ads are ordered in this order, that is relevance times VA, VA is the true value, we'll define it in a moment, over mu i. Uh, Oh. And the every advantages is bidding according to this this quantity that is going to be a Nash equilibrium. So true at your VI here or new I here is uh, here is uh, suppose Amazon is expecting to get two dollars per click, then two dollars is the true value for the Amazon or expected profit per click by the advertisers, that is what we call, expected profit per click by the advertisers, that is what we call true value of an advertiser. So if every advertiser is bidding according to this formula, everyone's bid is the best response to the uh, response to the all other bids. Otherwise they want, in this particular state, they won't be able to increase or decrease their profit by changing their bids. So this equilibrium is socially optimal, that, that means the sum of the revenues of all the advertisers is a maximum, and as well as this, uh, for this at this equilibrium, the certain uh, genes cost per certain gene revenue is also optimal for the given cost per case. So these are two properties of this equilibrium. How does this relate to the optimal ranking formulation? Your ranking is still the same. Ranking this is just is adding a pricing with that rank. Okay, so the, the, that formulation there, how are we increasing all of we are? Is equal to this ranking? No, no, no. It, this is just to define. Uh, here I add defining. No, no, I, I understand. Yeah. Under that pricing, is is still the ranking based on this formulation that you have? Yes, ranking is still the that formulation. Is based on this formulation. formulation. This formulation would be equal to. Yes. In fact, uh, in fact, uh, both orders would be the same at this point. Okay, yes, I just want to. Yeah, that you can see. Yes. Uh, so uh, this is the comparison with the uh, VCG. Uh, again, it's pretty theoretical, but then this is myself doing this, all these proofs, so many proofs. So, again, a certain revenue dominance. What this means is uh, uh, for the same bid values for the advertisers, the revenue for the search engine, according to this proposed mechanism, would be greater or equal to that by the VCG. That is a proof. And the second proof we have is like, uh, at this uh, proposed equilibrium, the revenue by the uh, revenue by the uh, revenue for this uh, um, for the search engine is same as the dominant strategy equilibrium of the VCG. What I mean by uh, so VCG has a nice property that 
the profit for a particular advertiser is, is maximal uh, if they are bidding their true values irrespective of the authorized bids that's a, a really good property of the uh, BCG so at this when everybody is bidding their true values that is called domain strategy equilibrium of the BCG and we can show that at this uh, bids their uh, profit is going to be maximal for BCG so what this proof is saying is that this proposed <coughs> equilibrium the profit for domain strategy equilibrium BCG equilibrium BCG and uh, proposed equilibrium the uh, so for this proposed equilibrium, the profit for the search engine is same as the profit for the search engine at the demonstrated equilibrium of the BCG. That is this. Okay, we are kind of we are over with that uh, with the game theoretical part of that. So I mean, the existence of Nash equilibrium is good and all that, but mm -hmm. the whether we can reach to that optimal state or that should be another question. Right? Yes, that is In true. your case, we you make a prediction between the ranking and the bid or not. Which means that if I'm bidding on something, I don't say this in uh, its impact. Right? I mean, if I were to be bidding on the third level, uh -huh. right? I could bid on the second level. So I would have made the direct feedback as a bidder, right? Uh, as to when I bid, what happens, right? And in your case, there is another something you have also, I may bid, but I might be able to get a lower ranking, basically, because uh, if I'm not just bidding directly on a position, right? So basically, for example, if you take a look at the... Well, that was one of the properties that he proved, that if you bid higher, you do go higher. Uh, provided that others no, not change that. Exactly. So, so, so it is, it is not the same to solve. <coughs> So, so in the, in the, let's say that I was just picking on a position, <coughs> I'm picking on a third position and I get that position if I, if I, if I bid. Right? If I have direct feedback from the system as to my bid, then I can adjust my bid.